All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today is exciting. We're starting a new playlist. Don't worry, I'm going to be continuing my playlist on GR. And on neuroscience, I realize I haven't posted a lot on that uh, playlist, but that's going to be increasing as well for those of you who are interested in the biological sciences. But in here, uh, we are going to be starting a new playlist on quantum gravity. I'm calling this quantum gravity for everyone. However, there are going to be some prerequisites because I can't start from scratch. And so I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the prerequisites. I'm going to talk about some of the sources I'm going to cover in this playlist. Uh, but there, these sources are not going to be the only sources, right? I'm going to sort of talk about what to expect also, and I'm going to dive straight into the concept of linearized gravity today. So with that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button make sure to go into my Patreon page where you will be able to find notes on this playlist as well. So let's get to the content. All right, we are talking about quantum gravity today. Quantum gravity is a huge, huge area in physics, right? It's super, super interesting, super, super esoteric. And I'm going to try to sort of demystify a lot of it, right? Because I'm super interested in this. I'm not myself a quantum gravity theorist or anything like that. I'm more of a biological physicist, but this stuff is interesting nonetheless. And I wanted to make a video or a video series on this. Tried, and I'm going to try to aim to make this a very comprehensive video series. If it takes me a hundred videos, 200 videos, it's going to be well worth it. But anyways, let's get to it. So quantum gravity, uh, the prerequisites for this are going to be minimal. I'm going to try to start from first principles. I'm going to try to uh, if there's topics that I feel that are necessary to go over, I'm going to go over them before I get into some more advanced stuff. With that being said, though, I hope you guys have at least some uh, knowledge in GR, some knowledge in quantum mechanics, some knowledge in uh, linear algebra, calculus, uh, some of the more basic stuff that you learn in undergraduate courses. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to avoid having you rely on graduate courses, and I'm going to try to start from topics in those areas. What are my sources? My, uh, well, I'm going to be first talking about uh, going into Leonard Susskind and David Tong's material on string theory. So Leonard Susskind has a video series on YouTube that we're going to cover in quite in some depth. Uh, we're going to tie that in with uh, topics covered by David Tong on string theory. We're also going to be talking about linearized gravity. All right, so lin linearized gravity. Um, and that's going to be the topic of the first few videos uh, that I'm going to post in this playlist. We're also going to be going over Carlo Rovelli's uh, loop quantum gravity video, uh, which is quite useful and quite interesting. Um, and I'm also going to be talking about the ADM formalism. This is going to be quite interesting also. This is going to be the idea of foliating space-time, and we're going to go quite deep into this. This is, this is a quite interesting paper that I enjoyed reading. Uh, we're also going to be covering um, the ADSCFT correspondence. However, with the ADS CFT correspondence, we're going to need to go over some more abstract math for this ADS part and for the CFT part. So this is conformal, conformal field theory uh, field. And this conformal field theory is uh, a good source that I'm going to go over is going to be Tobias Osborne's uh, quantum or CFT on YouTube. You can look this up yourself also, and there's going to be some, there's some books that he mentions that I'll go over as well. So, books. But we're not going to dive straight into conformal theory, field theory right now. And it might take a while for us to get to that point. I might make a separate playlist just to keep things relatively confined. 
So those are the sources. That's the prerequisites. Let's actually get into the material now. So today we're going to be talking about linearizing gravity. I'm sure you've seen, maybe you've seen this before, maybe not. The idea here is that we are going to take the metric, the metric tensor, something I've talked about in quite detail, something you can also find in other places on YouTube. And we're going to take this metric and we're going to split it up into two pieces. Okay. The two pieces that we're going to split it up into are going to be a flat space and a perturbation in flat space. So we're going to say that the metric itself is a perturbation from flat space, and that perturbation is encoded in this tensor right here, this h mu nu. So we can sort of think of this as here's our manifold, and here's our flat. Here's flat space. Flat space is described to us by eta mu nu, and our manifold is described to us by g mu nu. And the difference between the two is going to be encoded uh, by h mu nu. Okay. And so the idea here is that the, again, the metric tensor, this is the metric tensor, this is everything, this holds everything we need to know about measuring distances and uh, time at any point in space, time. And this metric tensor, right, the, the metric, we have the Schwarzschild, Schwarzschild metric, we have the Kerr metric, we can, we, there's the uh, uh, right, Reisner, Nordstrom, uh, Nordstrom, there's the Kerr-Newman metric, right? Kerr-Newman, Newman. There's the Ernst metric, and so forth. There's a lot of metrics. These metrics largely describe what black holes are like, and uh, we're also going to there's black holes, white holes, wormholes, and all that kind of stuff. But these metrics are all different, okay? And that all that is encoded in this g mu nu. Well, if we say at some point in space uh, it's flat, uh, if we say at some point in space there's some there's this flatness that we can measure, the metric itself is going to be a perturbation from that flatness, and that is this is that perturbation, okay? So everything sort of comes down to the metric, okay? And this metric is, this is all really we need to know, right? The, the metric is really we need to know because we already know what this is. So once we know this, then we can actually calculate this guy. And once we calculate this guy, then we can start calculating um, other important quantities that we're going to go over right now. So. The first thing we want to do is we want to say, okay, well, what about uh, g upper mu nu? How can we uh, understand this guy? So to understand this guy, again, this is just a perturbation from flat space, uh, but we're going to use k mu nu instead of h mu nu, and we're going to see what the relationship is between k and h. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're given this relationship right off the bat, right? So um, Mu sigma, sigma mu, well, that's going to be mu nu, okay? Or this is nu, right? This my, The v's that I type out sometimes, that should be the same, okay? And so we can put our definitions in, right? So these with the lower indices, with the upper indices, and then we can multiply things out, and we get this. This is going to be... We're going to cross this out, right? Because this is going to be a second order term. Uh, these things are supposed to be small. So sm something small times something small is something even smaller. So we're going to say that that's negligible. Okay. This here has to be zero, right? Because this is equal to, this is equal to mu nu, right? Mu nu, which is right here already. So th all this has to be zero. Okay, so let's set that equal to zero and see what happens. So we're setting it equal to zero. We can get, we can uh, take one side 
uh, or subtract um, this to, from both sides of the equation, we get this. Okay, we can then multiply both sides by eta rho mu, eta rho mu, and when we do that, um, we get uh, we get a Kronecker delta on this side, and we get uh, this is the same thing. Okay, so the, really the only thing that goes from here when we go from this line to this line is we get Kronecker delta. So um, what we have now is well, the Kronecker delta is going to raise, or it's going to sum over indices, right? So the sigmas go away, and we'll get k rho nu, and that's going to be equal to, well, this sigma is going to sum over with this sigma, this mu is going to sum over with this mu, so we get h uh, rho and uh, nu. Okay, so these are both upper indices, right? Upper index, upper index, upper indices. Everything else is summed over, and this is if this is new to you. This idea of tensor notation is a little bit new to you. Then you can go on to my uh, playlist on tensor calculus. You can go on to my playlist on general relativity as well, where uh, you should get more familiar um, with these topics. Also, again, I talked about uh, prerequisites. Tensors are going to be a prerequisite for this. There's really no two ways about it, right? I can't go all the way back to basics and talk and then build ourselves up to quantum gravity. I just, that's going to be too far of a stretch. But, um, so, so that's what we have. So we have that the relationship between K and H is this minus sign, okay? So what that means is that we can have what... Uh, what that means is that um, I'll come back here actually. So we have g mu nu is equal to eta mu nu minus h mu nu. Okay. Whereas this one was this one was plus mu nu. All right, so there's this plus sign right here. So the only difference between these two equations is the plus sign, or is the sign that we get here, is the plus and minus sign. All right. So we can also calculate mixed perturbation tensors, right? So if we, if we wanted to calculate this guy right here, or this guy right here, we, we just uh, raise with a metric. And when we raise with the metric, we get this. This times this, well, that's going to be second order again. That's going to be small and negligible, so we'll say that this is equal to this. Okay, so we raise with the we we raise with the Minkowski metric. All right. We can also calculate the affine connection. All right, so the affine connection again. If you don't, if you're not aware, you can go into my uh, series on again tensor calculus or GR to to look at that. Well, the affine connection is if we take the derivative of our metric, here's our metric, we put, we put our perturbation into our in, into our metric here, and the derivative of this guy is zero because this is just constant, this is flat space. We get a derivative of the, per, of the perturbed part. So the derivative then, if the derivative of the metric is the, equal to the derivative of the perturbed part, then really nothing is gonna change when we start start talking about the connection, so we just put this into our definition for the connection, okay. Uh, we also substitute this guy with this. Remember, the minus sign is what is what's unique for the upper indices. This all stays the same, so we get all this. This multiplied by all these. Well, that's going to be uh, second order. These are going to be really small. Okay, and what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to say, well, we can just get, we'll just get this right here. Okay. So there's a lot of approximations that are being made. We're ignoring a lot of second order, uh, uh, second order parts with, uh, with, with respect to this um, perturbed part because we're assuming that the small, it's a small perturbation, right? So something small times something small is going to be something smaller. Okay. And that's a theme that's going to be coming up with in the next few videos here when we calculate the 
um, affine connection and these th various different types of tensors as well. Uh, we're going to ignore a lot of stuff. We're going to ignore small um, exponential terms. And then we can also calculate the derivative of a subset of the affine connection. So the subset is going to be this set where sigma and sigma, or these two guys are the same. But before we do that, we have to figure out the derivative of the connection itself. Right, so this was our definition. We can raise indices again, uh, just as we've shown to, to get this. And so if we take the derivative now, we can get this, because we just take the derivative. Uh, this is, um, these should, these news should be the same, right? They look like mu's. So in some of the cases, I think when I did this, I overlooked some of these, some of the typing here. So that should be new. They're all news. New. Okay. And then, so we take that derivative. Uh, we can, if we identify this new here with sigma, right? So we identify that with sigma, 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 and then uh, sigma right here. Then we get this guy, right? So we just distribute, we distribute, distribute, and distribute. Actually, I'm going to do it like this, right? Because we're distributing here, right? Not behind, right? That'd be, we can't do that. So we get, that's the, this is the, the distributed parts. And so we get this right here, all right? Where we're defining H to be H sigma sigma. Okay. That's the trace, if you will. That's the trace of H. Okay. Again, because these guys, uh, this is sigma, or sigma nu, sigma nu. So these guys are effectively going to cancel out because we have nu sigma, nu sigma. Right. So that's how we get to this guy right here. So let's think about this really quick. So we've calculated, so we've said that the metric is an approximation and that it's the, it, not really an approximation, it's a perturbation away from flatness, okay? Because again, we're talking about the manifold. The manifold is curved. If the manifold is curved, then it's going to be, uh, this is going to be perturbed from flatness, okay? And we want to get everything in terms of this perturbation. And that's what we're doing. In the next few videos, we're going to sort of build up to talking about uh, perturbing. Oh, what's the Riemann curvature tensor in terms of this perturbation? What is the Weyl tensor in terms of this perturbation? What is the Ricci tensor, the scalar? What are all these in terms of this perturbation so that we can move on forward and talk about uh, spin two uh, dynamics? And we'll find um, we'll, we'll find relationships between. Uh, spin two objects, which are we're going to call gravitons, and we're going to take a look at their Lagrangians and we're going to make connections. But with that being said, and this is that picture again, right? So this is that picture. The connection takes us from one vector space to another vector space. And in one case, we have it on, in flatness, and the other one, we have it in the case of curved. Okay. But with that being said, uh, I'm not going to belabor too much math on you or not impart too much math on you, on you right now. Uh, this is really just an intro to quantum gravity for everyone. And with that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure to go into my Patreon page where you'll be able to see notes coming up. If you make a tiny little, um, a tiny little uh, donation of what, like $3 or something like that. Um, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.